Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio, where I have one of my most favorite shows, Christian Networking Entrepreneurs with Pastor Shalanda Johnson. Take it away, Pastor. Hey, good afternoon and happy new year to everyone. Welcome to Christian Networking Entrepreneurs, also known as CNE. I am your host, Pastor Shalanda Johnson. We are so excited to have you with us today. Please remember to like and share this broadcast. Stop what you're doing and share right now. CNE is a CNE platform is founded by Prophetess Teresa McCurry, where emerging entrepreneurs, business owners, and community leaders have the opportunity to tell their testimony, their strategy, and personal business development with us today. CNE, CNE is also an outreach ministry of New Beginnings Ministry. Apostle Gregory McCurry and Pastor Teresa McCurry are the overseers. Now, if you are interested in being a guest on this show, CNE, or sponsoring an event, please, please, please call us at 216 916 9270, extension 14. Extension 14. So today we have a guest, and all of my guests are special. This one is extremely special. We have today Pastor Antoine Burks. Thank you for showing up today. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm actually wonderful, and happy new year to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. So we are so glad to have you on our show today. We were supposed to have you a couple of times in the know, last right? year. <laughs> so we finally got you on. So we're going to talk about your business, your entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about your journey. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about where you came from, what your business is, how you got started. This is the part where we call earn the right to talk to us. Okay. Well, I'm a native of Cleveland, born and raised right here in this wonderful city. Um, I My business is... Well, let me say this. Back in 04, the Lord gave me a vision of what he said to me was spirit of excellence. I had not a clue. I had not a clue. So I wrote it down. I ran and I got the um, the business signified. So I got my corporation, everything in order. And it sat. It sat. It did nothing. So I had not a clue. So as life went on, I discovered that Spirit of Excellence was a business, it was a ministry, and God started to develop, or in that time, in that season, he was developing who and what he had called me to be. Mm -hmm. So at a young age, I knew I had purpose, even though, like a lot of us, you know, we got caught up in drugs, the streets, the whole freaking 90 yards, excuse me, the whole (laughs) 90 yards, we got caught up in ourselves, but I knew I had purpose, I knew I had destiny, I knew God was calling me to something. So I started working in the um, developmental disabilities um, arena. Mm -hmm. Working there, I learned discipline, I learned compassion, because working with the clients really puts you in a place that makes you look at yourself and get to know who you are. Um, It teaches you to love unconditionally. Working with developmental disabilities teaches you to have a heart for individuals that can't help themselves. I thank God I'm saved because we hear too many instances of people abusing our clients, Mm -hmm. our consumers, but because of the love that abided in me, It started to um, grow in me. It started to um, allow me to become a part of that community. So here we are, um, 20-something years later. We have our own agency, Spirit of Excellence, Inc., which is an agency that um, covers the whole spectrum of developmental disabilities. We have a day program, activity center. We have a transportation service. And then we do round-the-clock services for our clients in their homes. Oh, wow. So you're you're completely busy. Completely busy. (laughs) Totally. So let's go back a little bit. Um, You said you always knew you had purpose. Always. And I I think that's something to just stop and hone on for just a second because especially with our young people, because I feel like that too. I feel like Uh even as a kid, I did my not, I did my one too, Uh but I always knew that there was something about me that was different and there was something that I was called to do. So do you think knowing that in your heart and in your spirit, it kind of always gave you hope? Always gave me hope. And Pastor Shalanda, I have to make it 
totally clear. My grandmother spoke to me as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, you know, we, we, mom was a single woman. So she went to work. She went to school. She would drop us off at grandma's on Monday and pick us up on Fridays. Um, but my grandmother told me that I was somebody special. Wow. My grandmother, in spite of all that we went through, because mind you, not only was it myself and my sister, but my grandma had, um, four, for three older adults along with my mother and, you know, one aunt and her six kids was in the back room. Another aunt and her three kids was upstairs mm -hmm. all in one house. Mm -hmm. So grandma was doing the thing, working for the post office. We never went hungry. We never lacked. We never lacked anything. I saw the front yard go from dirt to grass, back to dirt, back to grass. She laid mm -hmm. sides. She planted seeds. But she always told me I was somebody. Wow. Wow. And it stuck. It stuck like glue. So I always knew, even in my 17 years of drug addiction, that I was somebody. And I'm, I'm going to let you know. I'm going I'm, I'm to prove it to you. Because even the enemy recognized who I was when I was running out there in drugs. Mm -hmm. The dope mm -hmm. boys was giving me I smoked more free dope than I paid for. <laughs> You and so you have favor in the dope house. It's on you. <laughs> Listen, when God puts favor on you, I don't care where you go. Yeah, yeah. But it always brings you back home. Wow, yes. Back to your first love. Yes. God first. Oh, I love the story about your grandmother. Everybody need to have a praying Ooh. grandma or somebody that just said, you know what, regardless of where you are, I still believe in you. And you talked about how it stuck with you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really a big advocate on watch what you say watch about your you kids say. because they will live out exactly what you say. When I hear them cussing their kids out in the streets and... You this and you that. I said, okay, well, I'm sorry, but he's going to be just what you said. Unless he recognizes who he really yes, is. Yes, or somebody along the way speaks comes in and life. just speaks into yes, his life. Yes, Yes, yes. So you said, okay, spirit of excellence. Spirit of excellence. So God gave you the name spirit of excellence. Yes. You got incorporated, which means you did the legal thing. Exactly. And it said for so long that, you know, you, you can get incorporated, but you can also lose incorporation. Yeah. But guess what? When I went back, because remind you, I, I, I received it in 04. In 09, I incorporated it. I never used it. So I lost it. So I thought, but when I went back in 2017, it was still sitting there. Mm. And no one had touched it. Wow. So it was waiting on me. It, it, I, I'm going I'm to leave waiting on me. I'm going to leave that alone. Because y'all know I'm a pastor and I'm a preacher, so I have yeah. to slow it down. <laughs> So, um, but when you incorporated, did you know it was going to be a center for those that you, you just incorporated the clue. name? Wow. Not a clue. And, and then we're going to talk about the name. Just, we're we going to take our time through this video. I love it. It is spirit of excellence. Those two words are weighty words. They're heavy words. They are words that require a certain action. And it is almost as though God says, I'm going to give you spirit of excellence. And when you're ready and when you're ready to walk into excellence, then it will be unveiled. But it's waiting here for you mm -hmm. until you're ready. So you said you worked with the um, developmental disability, disability, yes, disability. Thank you. Um, so did you work, at, you know, with the Cleveland agency or where did you start at? So what happened was um, at a young age looking for a job. I went to the Jewish Family Services, and that's all they do. Um, I'll never forget. Her name was Paula. Mm -hmm. She interviewed me, and she said, well, tell me about yourself. Um, da, 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 da. And I told her. She said, well, can you work a computer? I said to her, I said, I don't have a clue about working a computer, but I just purchased a computer mm -hmm. and put it in my home so that I can teach myself how to work a computer. She said to me, because of that initiative right there, I'm going to hire you. And I started working in Jewish Family Services in a group home as the manager of Lander House. The house still sits at the corner of Lander and Mayfield, mm -hmm. right behind the mattress store. And there, right there, is where I fell in love. I had six guys that lived in that house. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you how the guys are. I ran into, um, oh, what is his name? I ran into one of the guys about six years later. He looked up at me. He said, hey, Fatso, where you been? Where was you over the weekend? 
And it had been years. Oh, my goodness. But that was the impression I left the on impact. his life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. So you telling me, and I love this story because I just had a conversation yesterday in regards to this. So you telling me you come in for an interview, you technically do not have the experience At that is all. required for At this all. position. And because you showed some initiative, and I'm his sure confidence. Alan. I'm sorry. Alan. His name was Alan. <laughs> <laughs> So I, and I'm sure there was a confidence to go along with it. Spirit of excellence. And you are hired not just as a entry level. You're hired in a you said as a as a, a, man, a manager. A so manager. you go automatically in supervisorial yes. positions. And it's so amazing because um, I was talking to my sister and yesterday, and I was just saying how when the favor of God is on your life, what happens is that you excel in areas, and, and and it's just like you get there. You're like, wow, how did I get here? What, what, what happened? So you go in. You have you start off never knowing anything about the job. With six individuals, yes, and I can and I can only imagine um, what shift did you work? Was it an all day? All day. All, all I, day. Well, I would go in in the morning regularly because you're a house manager, but you're on call twenty four seven. Wow, as the house manager. And so you go in and you have six individuals, six grown men, six grown men, and and there again, Cutty. Remember, we're also supervising staff that come in on the three different shifts: first, second, and third mm-hmm. shift. So six individuals lived in the home, and then um, roughly four to six employees that I supervise because they actually help run the house. You know, the cooks do the the clothes, washing. You know, the whole ninety yards. So can you, if you can remember, tell me what you what was going through your mind as you're doing this? Or sometimes I think we're in situations and we just kind of work in it. And here's, look back. Here's what I learned. What Paula said to me, she said, Antoine, you have excellent employees in this house. They've been in this house. Let them work the house and you supervise. So I didn't understand that until one day another supervisor went to another home and she immediately went in and tried to change things Mm -hmm. instead of letting the staff that already knew the way do what they do and then you learn the way. Mm -hmm. So I let her, I'll never forget, her name was Lana Klobowski. Mm-hmm. She was this older German lady. And she, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm like, oh, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> but Lana, she loved those guys, and she ran that house. So I let her run it. Mm-hmm. That's being wow. an excellent supervisor. Yes. You let her run it. She knew what to do, how to do it. And then, Lana, now you teach me what you know. That is amazing. And that is um. That, that's that's a skill. Yeah. You have to learn that instead of automatically thinking, since I'm in position, I know everything. Because oftentimes, because you're put in a managerial role, doesn't necessarily mean you know the job. It just means that you have the, um, the leadership skill. Exactly. You still have to learn the position. Exactly. And we see that a lot today. And it's really sad because we have people that sit in offices and they want to dictate what happens on a floor, but they don't have the experience to know the floor, to Mm -hmm. dictate what's on, what goes on on the floor. And so it causes a, a, a rift in what you're trying to do. Instead of uh, cohesively working as together, it. now, er, I, as, as I would say, everyone is in their feelings now. As <laughs> that, as that. So, would you say, how long did you work that position? I was with them for nine years. Nine years. Mm-hmm. So, do you, would you say that that nine years gave you what you needed? Yes. To kind of go out and start, yes. start your own. Yes. And I went from there to working with um, the developmental center. Mm-hmm. Which, if you if you remember, you're from Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, we have three or four of them. We have one that's on Markentile Boulevard. We had another development center on the corner of Superior Euclid that's set right behind the um, the chicken, the Popeyes chicken. I never knew that was that's that what was that a was. development center. So I worked in there for quite a few years. At back in that time, the clients would come from their homes, come from their agencies, and they would do piece work. So they all worked online because because they were developmental disabled, but they would do, you know, if it wasn't under but counting the bolts and nuts or connecting the bolts and nuts and then throwing them in a box. Mm-hmm. We had major corporations and businesses that brought in the piecework for the individuals to do so that they could also make a living. Not really a living, but, you know, help them put some yeah. change in their pockets. So we had those all, all over the city. On Markentile, we had one at Superior Euclid. We have one over on um, 
on the west side. There's two on the west side, one on 130th and Brook Park, and then one uh, where I-76 makes that connection. So, yeah. So I got to be a supervisor on a line. We call them a supervisor mm-hmm. of the line in the um, activity center. So that was another teaching moment because it also taught me how to work with our clients. A lot of behaviors, a yeah. lot of, you know, because you got to remember, when developmental disability back in the day was known as mental retardation, mm-hmm. but when it first started, they were throwing all their kids in insane asylums. They were throwing them in different, you know, when we look at the history of it, yeah. because they didn't know what to do or how to do, it was easy for a parent to drop them off and they lock them up and load them up with medication. But then as time went along, we were taught how to work with and cause these children to function well on a daily mm-hmm, basis. Mm-hmm. I love I love that because um, I, as you know I was in the school system for so long uh-huh. and those that had uh, a learning disability or some I- challenges I- uh-huh. um, when I was in school you would they would put them all in one classroom and kind of isolate them from everybody else mm-hmm. but as time progressed we learned how to deal with the uh, the challenges we uh-huh. learned how to treat mm-hmm. people like mm-hmm. people. Exactly. Regardless of, of what their yeah, what their challenges yeah. are. And I believe that what we have seen is that we have seen those individuals soar. Yeah. We have seen them do yeah. more than we ever thought that they yeah. could do before. So um I, I love what you were saying that through time things and have inclusiveness changed. Inclusiveness is important. Oh, I, I just Inclusive. stop there and deal with that. Oh my God. Inclusiveness, when we learn that I can take a disability, I can take a mental issue and put it in with love and put it in with individuals that are supposed to have it together. But combine them, because I don't care what nobody say, I could sit around with you long enough where I'll learn something from mm-hmm, you, I'll mm-hmm. glean something from you that will cause me to pull it in and change my world. Well, likewise with our clients. So when we include them in everything, I have a gentleman that I bring to church that he'll out-worship you. Mm. Wow. Lift his hand. Now, he might not remember, mm-hmm. but he worships his God. And that told me that our guys have a relationship with God that we know nothing about. Yes. We don't have a clue. Yes. So we need to be strategic about where we are so that God can be reached by every man. And you talked about... Um you know, having them involved in everything that everything. We, everything that we do, it is it, and and how they can glean and they'll pick up yes. certain things and good and, behaviors th- and bad, and that's just with anybody. That's real. <laughs> that's with that's anybody. Real. Um, um, one thing about it is you talked about disabilities or challenges. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am. Um, I have dyslexia. So all through school, what? absolutely. So reading can be difficult sometimes, and numbers and letters are just all over the place. Like I can read and this is stuff everywhere. But what I had learned and my parents uh, really instilled is that if you stay around individuals that read well, people that do certain things, eventually you'll find your way on how to maneuver through the challenges that you have. So just because there is a disability, if you surround me around people that love yeah. People that see the disability yeah. but don't name it and, exactly. and, and, and you know call me that disability exactly. all the time. Exactly. But let's look at children. You can tell a child that's around a loving family mm-hmm. that conversates, mm-hmm. and then you can tell a child that sits in a room all day and nobody gives them any affection and nobody gives them anything. You can tell the difference. Absolutely. So it's very important. With our guys, it's very important. And, and I wanted to hone in on that because um, I really believe to do what you do, it, you have to have a heart. Have to. Have a heart have for individuals. Um, uh, my daughter worked at a nursing home, and it's my oldest daughter, and she kind of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> she kind of feels a type of way about herself. Right, right, so. But I would tell you this. When she went to work to the nursing home, she Changed fell her. in love with Changed those individuals. And, yeah. and, and she just, like, learned so much, and it was amazing because oh, what I have gosh. found out is that it changed her. Mm-hmm. It does. So would you say that during this nine-year period, what changed inside of you? Well, you know, they used to call me Peter back in the day. Okay. Quick to go off. Uh, you know, still can't be. But, <laughs> but you know, kind of arrogant and everything. Mm-hmm. But when I discovered, because not all of our clients were born with a disability. Okay. Now, how, um, how does that come about? Well, I have a gentleman. Um, 
all the way through high school, went to college, uh, a basketball star. He had an accident, accident, ended up in a coma. After the coma, he came out with traumatic, t- um, um, traumatic TB, TBI, traumatic brain injury. Mm-hmm. Changed the entire course of his world. Now, every day is a new day. Every day. he And I've been with him 10, 11 years. Mm-hmm. He may remember my name today and he may not. So accidents, incidents that hit the brain, mm-hmm. you know, it changes the course of the individual. Yes. So um, I learned that at any moment my world could change. So I need to pull all that in. Mm-hmm. I need to pull all that in. It's only by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. There go I. Wow. Wow. That's a, a, a good lesson to learn to, that it, I think it helps you value life. Yes, ma'am. It helps you value um, all of the things that we are able to do without any assistance yes, or, ma'am. you know. So now we, we, we're, we're at this place and you're loving what you do and you're happy at this at, at this job, Love right? It. You're happy. I'm, I'm sure it. you're doing well. What? clicks in your mind or in your brain and say, hey, I love this. I'm happy here. I'm in a supervisor role. Now I need to step out on my own. What, what happens to bring that transition? I got sick and tired. Well, there's two things. Let me go here. So I left that industry and I started working for an agency called Cleveland House Network. And I Drastically a, different. Yeah, drastically different, but di- working with people. Okay. I had a supervisor. <laughs> Lord help me. I had a supervisor that I loved, and then she flipped on me one day. And I started having issues with my sciatic nerve, and I went out on FMLA. And I I said, Lord, I don't want to go back there. I Mm -hmm. said, I do not want to go back there. I don't want to have to deal with that. I I need to be on my own. So I um, was out for two weeks. I said, so what do I need to do? The Lord said, prepare your resume. And when you go back, you'll know what to do. I prepared my resume. I went back. I said, hi, so-and-so. She looked at me. I said, hello. She looked at me. I said, you mean I've been gone two weeks and you're not going to change at all? I said, here, take this. You have a good day. I don't want that. Da-da-da-da-da. So um, I took it back to the human resource, and she was just, she just screamed. She was so outdone. She's like, he's leaving. He's leaving. I said, yeah, I don't have to put up with this. So I went home. I said, okay, God, I'm out here. (laughs) What next? Scared in my Boots. Mm-hmm. Rent was due, light, gas, cell phone. I said, what next? What, what am I to do? He said, what have you always done? This came to me. I immediately went, looked back up my name, put everything back up. Mm-hmm. It was there waiting on me. Put everything in order. I wrote my business plan. And this is, this is powerful. I tell people that God said to me, if you give me something to work with, I'll work with it. Okay. I wrote my business plan. I wrote everything God gave me. And I took it and laid it on the altar. I said, Father, you gave it to me. I'm giving it back to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. It's yours. And it laid on the altar for months. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> he started giving me how to pull this together, how to pull that mm-hmm. together. The Lord blessed me to put this business together. I do have a board, but he gave me mm-hmm. walking charges. He gave me direction. He's holding me responsible. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been kind of doing it since. Oh, wow. So how did you go about uh, even, so you, you you put your business plan on the altar, you waited for months, and what was the break? You know how it, it, it's a time where, okay, God, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then something happens, and when that thing happens, it, it's like a floodgate, everything breaks. Here's what happened. I was sit, I sit on the board of um, FRDC, um, Fairfax Development Corporation, mm-hmm. Corp. So one of the board, one of the staff members, because at this point I'm working at, um, I left there and I started 
a friend of mine called. She said, Antoine, don't you need a job? I'm like, yeah, I need a job, but I'm not trying to work. I'm not trying to work. But I took the job because I was nervous. I was really scared. I, yeah. So I took the job. Money started looking funny. <laughs> Girl, no, it wasn't looking funny. It wasn't nothing to look at. <laughs> so I took the job, and I started working for FRDC. And then they asked me to be on their board. And then after being on the board, you know, in our development corporations, um, one of the ladies came and she said, Antoine, don't you want to, see, this is a setup. It's all a setup. Yeah. She said, Antoine, don't you want a house? I said, girl, no. I was living in one of my one of my uncle's houses, you know, wasn't treating him right, you know, just ignorant. Mm-hmm. She said, don't you want a house? I was like, she said, here, take these keys and go look at this house because FRDC do houses in the community. Mm-hmm. So I went, I opened the door. I said, Lord, do you want me to have this? I walked in, I walked around, I got excited. I took the house, moved into the house. The same lady came back to me and she said, Antoine, I have a friend who is looking for someone to care after her brother. Okay. I said, okay. I went, met with the family. The family gave me everything to take care of their brother. I started taking, and that's been 11 years. I started taking care of their brother after him. It was one client after another client. This happened. That happened. I said, okay, well then, Lord, I'm sick. He was going to a day program. Mm -hmm. Going to his day program, I would go to pick him up, and they couldn't find him. I'm like, well, why can't you find him? But every time we found him, he was back in the room somewhere asleep. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what is he coming for? If you all aren't doing anything with him, what is he coming for? I said, okay. I heard God say, what do you start your own day program? I said, huh? Start your own day program. So I started on that journey. And what I have found out that oftentimes you're the answer to the the problem. You're the answer to your, yeah. If if it's something that really agitates you and you You just don't, you're the answer. Yes, ma'am. And oftentimes we're waiting for, well, somebody needs to do something (laughs) better. But no, it's it's you. you. The burden is given to you because oftentimes when the burden is given to you, then you will do for the errors that you see, you know, already, this is not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not doing it at at all. So you get client after client. And then I got pissed at his transportation Mm. and asked the Lord for a van. He started transportation. Wow. So he had already started giving me clients to service around the clock. Mm-hmm. One, one, one leg. Then upset about the um, transportation because that came next. And here's what, let me tell you how good God is. And let me tell you what I need entrepreneurs to understand. He said, if you give me something to work with, I'll work it. I got the van and set all this up before I had anything. I had the one client. Mm-hmm. But that's it. So I purchased a van, no clients. Yeah. But I watched God. Mm-hmm. I got the business in line in place with no clients. I even got my day program with no clients. Mm. I trust what I heard God say to me. So uh that's amazing because you have to have, I believe that you have to get into a certain place with God before you can move that Relationship. way. Relationship. That, that is not something that um, you, uh, you have to be locked in with God in order to be able to move. That's a whole nother level faith. That, that, that's a faith, faith beyond a tithing. It's a faith beyond salvation. It's a different level of faith and it's a different level of trust. It's because it is nothing worse than saying, God, you call me out here and then it's nothing in the bank account. And that's a real thing. That's, that's real. a real thing. <laughs> so, okay, God, any day now. That's real. You know, that's and then real. how you begin to see, okay, God, you've given me this idea. Uh, did you even have the idea of transportation when you bought the van or you just say, hey, let me just well, go yeah, out yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And see, and see, this is what I tell people. If you know God has given it to you, And you make the move. Well, I had to learn that if I'm going to trust you, I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Even when, because let me tell you, all this started, really started 2017. And then there was Mm COVID-19. COVID-19 had me scared. Yeah. It had me worried. I'm like, okay, God, how are you going to put me out here 
Because when it came to COVID-19, it shut everything down. The parents didn't want their children coming out the house. The agencies and they all the, the big agencies turned their agencies into activity centers so they didn't need to come out. You know, they, they start yeah. doing their own thing, their own thing. And here starts Antoine. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and it's, it's funny you said that because I was talking to another business owner and she opened up this beautiful salon and she said, I opened it up and like six months later, COVID was here. <laughs> And she was just saying how um, you still have to really trust and trust believe that God, God gave, it, gave it to you because um, COVID has never happened before. My kids never. said, well, what happened when this happened before, mommy? I said, it, it never happened before. So now your faith is in a place that it has to be where you can't even go to anybody for assistance mm -hmm. on how to move in this in this arena. The world it's never have been. Clue. Nobody knew, you know, what to do. Mm -hmm. So now you have you have your clients, you have this um van and, that you just bought. And and the day program, so here here. I'm paying a, 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 a van note. I have nine employees because I have to service my client around the clock. Mm -hmm. And then I got the, the, the space for the agency. That's another lease. One client. And God brought me through like a rock star. Wow. With one with client. With one client. And so, and did you still have your nine employees? Yes. Because they, they I, were I couldn't eight. take care of them by myself around the clock 24-7. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So, I remember, was it last year I came to visit your facility? Yes. It, last, it probably was around this time, actually. Uh -huh. So, I go to visit your facility, and you don't have, like, a baby facility. You got a night. You got a facility. <laughs> <laughs> and we just acquired more space. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you got this facility, and uh, I think the gentleman that was there, is that your one that's client? Him. That's him. <laughs> he has his own reading spot because that's the one that had the traumatic brain injury. Okay. Prior to, he was an avid reader. He loves to read. He's very intelligent. He can tell you everything about the Fairfax area where he was born and raised. He can tell you everything about that area up until his accident. So... He's a historian that's locked into the accident that he had. Mm -hmm. He he loves God, so I, I make sure our clients, I mean our staff, takes him to service so that he could worship. He was you know raised up in the church, a Catholic church, so he knew he had a relationship with God. Yeah. So to me, that relationship with God is even greater now because we we don't know, but I know that it, when he walks in service, he he'll worship out worship you. He'll pray and praise God. So yes, he's the one. Yes, I, 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 when you said one client, I was like, oh, I remember, uh -huh. I remember. So let's go back a little bit. We've talked about the client, and we've talked about the business, but could you talk a little bit about the relationship that I'm sure you developed with the families? And see, that's what's become the key, because families entrust us with their, 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 their children, their relatives, mm -hmm. and the whole 90 yards. Um, the one client we're talking about, his family, his sister hugged me the other day. She said, I remember when this was just a conversation. Wow. But look at it now. So it's those families because God charges us to the client, but it's the families. Mm -hmm. It's the families. I had a mother, a uh, Caucasian mother. She said to me one day, she said, Antoine, that's how people be checking you out. She said, are you a, a pastor or a um, a um?" A man of God? I said, yes. So her name had popped up on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. I tell people, be careful what you put on Facebook because Facebook will tell the entire story. Now before I interview people, I go to their Facebook page. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some people I don't interview because of their Facebook page. And what I, what I tell people, what I even tell my kids is that you can fool me in a face-to-face -face interview, but your social media tells me tell who you story. are. Tells me who you are. I've, uh, um, 
a position that I had applied for and I sat down for the position and they said, we've checked your social media. <laughs> They're on it. So they had already knew pretty much who I, because you're not going to fake who you are on social media. It you you, you going to tell the whole truth and nothing but <laughs> Whether you wanted to or not, you know. That's real. But the thing about it too is that you talked about um, basically your reputation preceding you. And I am, I believe that God is such uh, a strategist, even in our business arenas. So what he'll do is he will allow us to have a business that takes care of us naturally, but also puts us in a kingdom um, perspective in a kingdom arena where not only are you servicing clients, but you're pouring into clients. And you said something I think that is just amazing. You understood that he came from a church background and because of his disability it didn't disqualify a relationship no man so now not only do you see some of the challenges that he has but you understand that regardless of how we see things there is still something in oh, him yes. that yearns for oh god and i want to bring that up because i know we're talking about business but it is so important that when you do do a business it has to be something that resonates with your heart and that resonates with your spirit let me share this with you I have a young man that rides on my van, Caucasian young man, mm -hmm. and when I tell you he's off the scale, he is off the scale behavior and the whole 90 yards. Well, he started, he had been riding my van a week. He watched me take my phone, pull up the Pandora, mm -hmm. and put worship music on. One day, it wasn't worship music. Mm -hmm. And he pushed my arm. I'm like, boy, don't be pushing my arm. You don't be pushing my arm on this man. You don't be pushing my arm. <laughs> and so he reached for my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why are you reaching for my phone? I'm like, you better sit back and put your seatbelt on. Don't make me stop this <laughs> man, dude. So finally, the next day, I put Pandora on it. He sat back in his seat, didn't move. Another day, I didn't have it on. He reached for my phone and started doing this. And then one day he said to me, I had never said nothing to me. He said, I want music. Mm. I said, oh, he wants the worship music on Pandora. Turned it on. He sat back in his seat. Wow. I tested it. Mm -hmm. on the way home that evening to make sure that I was seeing and understanding what was happening. And that's exactly what it was. So today the name of my program is Rhythm of Life. Got it. It's because it was the rhythm of the worship music that calmed his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Blew my mind. So is that one of the programs inside of? No, I think I so I have Spirit of Excellence. Okay. I have your Excellence Transportation Service, LLC. Mm -hmm. And then I have Rhythm of Life Adult Day Program. Look at here. <laughs> In a matter of how many years since, um, you, since uh, 2017, did 2017 you say? to today. Wow. And all of that came from you just being obedient, taking and, this particular job. Um, I always tell people, do not despise small, small beginnings. beginnings. Oh, my, oh my God. goodness. That's key. And I've, I've quoted that to myself yeah. over and over and over. And I've also quoted to myself, behold, I'll show you a more excellent way. A more excellent way. Spirit wow. of excellence. And what I love about CNE is that it allows individuals to come on here and say, you know what? I have a legitimate yes. business. I have structured it properly yes. because you did the work. You got incorporated. This is something that we really emphasize here exactly. is, you know, making it legit. Exactly. Um, got incorporated. You had a business plan. And so you heard from God, but you did the natural thing yes, as well. It's important. Here's the reason why. Just over the last couple of days, the Lord has revealed to me that the purpose of Christian entrepreneurship is so that we can fund the kingdom. Absolutely. So we have to have everything in divine order, naturally and spiritually. Spiritually because we have to have a right heart to keep God first so that he'll continue to pour into us so that we can pour into the kingdom. Yes, the, the, the funds that we can make with God's idea as individuals mm -hmm. will supersede what I'll ever make 
working on another man's job. Absolutely. So I have to keep myself in right standing spiritually, in right position spiritually, so that God can continue to pour into me. Because I haven't hit the I haven't hit the the peak of where it is. Yes. Yes. Um, Because there are some ideas that he's given me that's going to cause this agency to stand out. I look at some of the agencies that are old and that are closing down now. Mm -hmm. Rosemary Center and all those. Those little old nuns or little old Jewish ladies started their homes with a single bedroom home 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Legacy. Yes. So yeah. it's all about legacy. Oh, wow. That's uh, that that that's so true. Um, like I said before, I think it's just amazing. And I, I, let me stop there. I love the arena that you are in and a, a service magnitude because I think that sometimes individuals or we think that they're, you can only open up a shop or you can only open it. There is so, so much, much that this world has to offer. And there is so many areas that God needs to position the people of God. We serve a strategic God and he wants to plant us in every industry Absolutely. there is. So you could have gone to school and he'd given you all that you need to work with numbers. Could have been like me and got a GED. Mm-hmm. So he could have taught you and given you a formula for hair. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever. It's important that we be in position so God can strategically set the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. God's will be done. I love that because I believe just as you believe that in every facet of career that a believer needs to be able to infiltrate and go in. So that does mean we need doctors and and, and, uh, believers. We need lawyers. Guess what? We need them in the um, entertainment industry. We need it in the rap sector. We need it all in in so many different areas. And let me say something about those guys. And this is why we have to pray for them and not kick them to the curb. Mm -hmm. Because some of those guys have learned the principle. The principle of sowing and reaping. The principle of tithing. You know, we only got 15 minutes left, right? (laughs) Okay. You know, and, and, and we wonder why they're doing big. No, it's not because they, they have the answer or they play the best basketball, but they sow, they give, they tithe. So I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> See, you two pastors on here, really? Okay, but anyway, I just talked about that on Sunday. What um, sowing and tithing is a principle. Principle. And that principle, whoever operates the principle, If your dog it works. take a bone and give it to a dog down the street, he is... <laughs> The so principle it, works for whoever, for whoever uses, uses it. it. It's so funny. I have a one daughter, and she's uh, 18 years old. She just opened up her nail salon. Amen. 18 years old. She's yes. still in school. And she would do nails at home or do different little things. This is her second business. And she was like, oh, don't let me forget to pay my tithe. Yeah. And she is an avid giver. But she learned very early. She'll hey, 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 wait, wait. When I do this... This happens. So for her, it is an urgency to pay yes. her tithing because yes. she has gotten the principle. Yes. Now, we still challenge in some other areas. <laughs> That's all right. You got the basics. The rest will come. Yes. The rest will come. But she is an 18-year-old yes. Yes. entrepreneur who is in her own space to her thanking God and for here, her parents. And here's the thing about but, that. Look at the other little girls that's looking in and watching her. See, that's what that's what we're talking about. That's yep. the plan of God. Yeah, because because somebody's going to ask her how. That's right. Why? Well, that's how right. did you do this at this that's particular right. age or whatnot? Right. And, and and so that is just so important. And then you talk. We're talking about lining things up naturally and lining things yes. up spiritually. Yes. They go hand, hand in, in hand. hand. They go. Hand they in absolutely hand. go hand in God hand. God first. And the rest comes in. Because it's going to be hard for God to be blessing you with abundance and you haven't done mm. what is right. Because even in the Bible it says, give Caesar with Caesar. Come on here. So, Either that he'd be walking around with holes in your bags. You better give it to get it making together. Making a whole lot of money yes. and just cannot sustain yes. anything mm. because we haven't lined yes. up properly. So let's talk about the transportation company for a second. So is the transportation company solely 
do, do you do transportation for other venues or just I for do. yourself? Or? Um, I do, and we plan to mm-hmm. because one thing I'm learning, even with see the, the, the seniors and those that are on a different, you know, Medicaid and all that kind of stuff, you have to be connected to those systems in order to, to, to get the funding from yeah. them to pay for it. But our goal is to take our transportation and make it an all-inclusive um, limo service that will do it all eventually. So that's a part of the, we sitting down now trying to rewrite the plans and try to, you know, do it all. You know, you know it's just... It's just so much. I, I, I so get it. And, <laughs> and let me stop there. So you have a transportation company and I have a transportation yes. company. This is how amazing God is. My business don't infringe on yours. Yours don't infringe on mine. It, it didn't mean you didn't do it because I didn't. I, I did it. And, and what I tell people is it's enough for everybody, even if we did. Even if you decided tomorrow to get certified and come in with developmental disability, because here's what I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Lord, before this year's out, I need two more vans because I have all, I'm in this central area, Mayfield, Richmond, Highland, Cleveland Heights. I haven't touched South Euclid. Yeah. I haven't touched yeah. Strongsville. I haven't touched all. I, listen, it's enough for everybody. Everybody is to the point where I believe that there is so much to the point where we'll have to start connecting. Like, we'll uh, have look, to. you got you got somebody that can go over here. Yeah, we got to, have to. <laughs> and that's a blessing because at the end of the day, we spend so much money getting people um, certified, getting you know insurance wise. Yeah. So if I can help you out, I'm already insured. Already mm-hmm. might have this person in place, mm-hmm. that person in place. So we can say, and this is what I'm trying to tell people with development of disability. You run an agency, I run an agency. Your your person has already got the background check, got da 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 yeah. da 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 da. Mine already have this this first aid CPR. So why can't we cross each other and help each other out when? But see this, you know. That's all right. Networking, Christian networking, yes, yes, entrepreneur. Yes. I'm sitting here with some ideas. We yes. got to talk about food out here. <laughs> yes. So we've talked about all of that God has done. We've talked about how God has, um, Pastor Teresa uses this statement, and I, I, I'm telling you, I'll use it forever. It's prolong. is it prolong? prolonged, sustained. sustained. Oh, my goodness. I just put it out there. It is... Um, Oh my God! Prolonged, sustained provision. Provision, exactly. Prolonged, sustained, sustained provision. provision. That is just Prolonged amazing. Time, so, right tell us how do we find you? There could be someone that is listening today, yes. and they have an individual, they have a loved one that needs your services. How do we get in touch with you? Um, our website. Go check out our website. We're still working on it. We're at www.spiritofexcellenceinc.org. Um, we're on Facebook. You can go to Antoine Birds on Facebook. You can go to um, Rhythm of Life on fa- on Facebook, and then um, our website. Um, yes. Our office number is two one six. Five zero five five three three two. Our center is located at one twenty two hundred Fair Hill Road, um, Cleveland, Ohio four four one twenty. We're now in the Fair Hill Partners building. And for those of you um, that are from from Cleveland and around, you know, remember Fair Hill Partners used to be the old military um, psych ward. <laughs> Really? Yes. No, I did not know you were. Yes. Do the history. Yeah. Um, educating me. Yeah. It used to, as a matter of fact, when we was little and some of our folk would hit, hit the wrong piece of drug, we got a little <laughs> 10 to $15 with dropping the ball up oh, there here. Are you oh, serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now Fair Hill works for me, no? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So, wow. Reach out to us. I'm, I'm excited um, for this interview. I, I think you've opened our eyes to so many different um just, just so much. We, you've opened our eyes to dealing with those that have some challenges, um, showing love and compassion. So on, on just on the behalf of just the body of Christ Amen. and individuals, just thank you for doing this. Amen. Thank you for Thank looking you. after our brothers and sisters and showing love and showing care. Thank I you. believe that there is an extra reward in heaven for a service that you do, Amen. that you Amen. do. So we got Bless what? Because I'm always taking it down to the end. I got 10 minutes. Left. <laughs> <laughs> if you would say something to a young entrepreneur 
who who is thinking about going into your field, what would you say to encourage them? I would encourage them to sit quietly and talk to God. Mm-hmm. Ask God to give them direction. And then I would tell them, make sure your heart is in the right position. Because I laugh and had a good time. But it's sometimes challenging to sit in our in our homes, one, and deal with mm-hmm. the development of disability. And then deal with because a lot of those with development disability they are hurt they are they are they are experiencing pain and they lash out at you mm-hmm. so you have to make sure your heart is in the right place your heart is in the right place as long as your heart is in the right place go for it find your agency find your group home and understand this i did not start out making a lot of money you see me roll my eyes because that is tell the truth right there. It doesn't it wasn't start about out. the money. Yeah, money yes. is not everything. It's not. But when you go home and know you've hurt, helped somebody, mm-hmm. and when you get up in the morning and they waiting on you and expecting you, and you give you give a guy in a group home a piece of barbecue that they don't normally be able to get. Mm-hmm. That excites their world. It's the little things. So, so, so seek God. Make sure your heart is in the right position. And then go for it. We need young people because that's a whole other topic. Okay. Getting our young people in position to work and be consistent. Yeah, it's a totally. Because I don't know about you, but some of my challenges is just finding uh-huh. help. That's, that's the major challenge. Yeah. So ask God to show you and ask him if it's for you because if he tells you, when he tells you yes, you'll never turn back. Wow. So you say this is it. This is what you do for life. Yeah. This, and also, I really, it's a ministry. It's a, it is my marketplace ministry. Marketplace ministry. Yes. It is my marketplace ministry. And that was another, that's another conversation because some of us think we're all supposed to be in a pulpit. Some of us think we're all supposed to be in the church house. But Come there on. is my ministry. Because even in the mornings at my day program, you'd be amazed what our clients know. My clients pray. I have a young lady that that's seeing impaired that can quote a scripture almost as better than you and I. Wow. So that's what we do to top our mornings off. Yes, I Marketplace love it. Ministry. I love it. Thank you so much, Pastor oh and Twan, God. for coming. This is to me. I enjoy myself immensely. Um, I, I enjoy having conversation, and, and and it's a great thing when I can talk about business that I love, and I can talk about ministry. God. Yeah. Yes, it's <laughs> yes. it. It's it. It's it. So yes. thank you so much for coming for on. Me. We thank enjoyed you, so you immensely. Much. Reach out to Pastor Antoine, yes. Spirit of Excellence. Reach out to him. Are you hiring? Um, I am. I just had to put that out because I know I the struggle. I am hiring um, because I plan to. I believe that after this here last waves of COVID, I'm going to blow up. Mm. And I'm trying to put people in position now. Yes. Because it's about to happen. It is about to happen. So y'all yes. heard it here on Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. Again, if you are interested in being a guest here on Christian Networking Entrepreneurs, please, seat. please <laughs> give us a call. I'm going yes. to give you the phone number, which is 216-916-9270, extension 14, or feel free to email us at C as in cat. H R N E T E N T at Gmail dot com. Feel free to email us. And also remember, if you don't network, you don't uh, work. Don't we work. will see you soon. God bless you. We'll see you all next month. Love you, love you. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you.